Welcome students, I'm Mr. Boscarini and for our unit on forces and motion our lesson today will be about Newton's first law of motion. Our lesson starts with a question. Do you always need a force to keep an object in motion? Now, our experience tells us, yes, you, de you do need a force to keep something moving. A very simple example is a car. As, lo as, as long as you keep pushing the gas pedal, the car goes. But as soon as, for instance, uh, you might run out of gas and the engine stops, so will the car. As soon as you stop the engine, the car will still keep on moving, but even slower and slower and slower, and eventually will stop. So unless you find out a way of pushing your car or refill it with gas, there's no way your car is going to move. But it's also true that this happens because your car is not only affected by the force applied by the engine, but also by the forces of friction. For instance, air resistance or friction with the ground. Not only we also have friction within the car itself, within the various uh, gears and levers which are inside the car. Indeed, we also have a very different experience. Uh, 40 years ago, more than 40 years ago, we sent out satellites, probes, to explore uh, the outmost parts of the solar system, uh, namely the Voyager 1 and 2 space probes. And even after 40 years, not only were fully functional, at least to some extent, but they're still moving. And we do not have uh, an engine here which still keeps on pushing it. It's just because uh, there's nothing out there to slow them down. So they keep on going actually at very high speed. What Sir Isaac Newton found out, and actually was postulated even before by Galileo Galilei, is that you don't need a force in order to keep an object in motion. And a modern formulation of the first law of motion of Sir Isaac Newton is the following. When no external forces are acting on an object, this object will have two choices. The first choice, if the object was Still, it was not moving, it will keep not moving, and that's pretty obvious. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. But what's really interesting is the second part. If you, have, if you have an object which is moving, and no external forces are acting on that object, that object will keep on moving, and not in any way of moving, but will keep on with the same speed and going in the same direction. We can reformulate this by saying that the object will keep the same velocity. Because if you remember, velocity is speed and direction. The same law, the same first law of motion by Isaac Newton applies when the forces acting on that object are balanced. Or as we say, they cancel each other out. Now let's see some examples. Here's again our friend Felix von Gardner. As he was, he was standing on the ground, fully equipped for his space jump, two forces were still acting on him. His own weight, which was pushing him downwards toward the center of the earth, and the force from the ground. These two forces were balanced, so he was standing still, he was not moving. As Felix was falling downward, he was still affected by its weight, but eventually, at some point, air resistance managed to balance Felix's weight. And at that point, we say that um, a jumper, a skydiver, has reached terminal velocity. 
What does it mean? Since these two forces cancel each other out, it doesn't mean that he stops in mid-air. He's still going, actually he's going very fast. But his speed, actually his velocity, is constant at this point. He's not accelerating anymore. So that's the meaning of V equal constant. So, what was the learning goal of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain what happens to an object when balance forces, that means forces that cancel or balance each other out, are applied on it. Our next lessons will be about the second of Newton's laws of motion and an application of that second law, and that is the difference between mass and weight.